He is asking, the Prime Minister of Burkina Faso has now resigned due to protests against uh, basically the government's inability to prevent jihadi attacks. Do you think any African country will be able to stop this? Um, so for those who are not aware, there's a lot of Islamist violence in Africa. It's actually not covered as much as I think it should be, um, particularly in Western Africa and the Sahel. Um, the Islamist jihadist violence is a huge problem in this region, especially considering that it covers several different countries. And um, it's partly, it's not just like a jihadist attack, it's also insurgency, right? Um, do you think any country, African country will be able to stop this? But it's so difficult, friend. partially because of the region where it is focused in, which is the Sahel. And it does cover so many different countries. It's hard well, France it, is there. to spill over from one country to another. France what? France is actively involved there, uh, there trying to help out. And people are saying, like, you're just there trying to, trying to become colonial again. You're like, go get out. Like, France is, like, literally <laughs> the only country there right now trying to, like, help these um countries become stable right but there's and massive criticism of their interventions in the i know i know but okay i i know but like i i have a suspicion that if they just pack up and leave the people would be like can you please come back <laughs> i don't know i'm just i don't maybe i'm wrong but i like i don't think right now like uh, there is i mean the criticism is fair like it's not like france you know, has a really bad record over there, <laughs> right? France has a really bad record of human rights violation back, you know, around that area. And oh, yeah. recent, yeah, but recently, um, the criticism that we have for France there recently is not human rights violation. It's mostly like, like France today is different from France just like 50 years ago, right? Um, and, but the criticism now is like, failure to do this right or take account for that like it's not like it's not the same criticism it's not like not even close right um and i don't and i think even with the criticism of france's performance right now around that area i don't know if the cost of them not being there might be a lot higher because like there's no one else right now willing to to contribute what france is contributing you know i mean it's within france's best interest for that area to become stable you know i mean it's it's actually it's a it's it would be it would be costly for europe as a whole like europe is motivated to see the entire like western and north africa like this is a this is a good thing about internet one positive thing about western intervention sometimes like it's not all negative is the is the mutual is the mutual interest instability right because mm -hmm. instability around that area will cost europe right like if these if these governments fail that would mean more refugees more un more uncontrolled refugees for europe so i mean fa france is now paying you know taking the lead in trying to provide some stability it's mutually well, it's mutually beneficial. It's it's beneficial to the countries there for for somebody to help them to provide stability, and and it's beneficial to Europe as well. I mean, as much as I'm okay with the complaints, you have to understand that France's tax money is being spent for you to get forces to tr to tackle some of these jihadis. So I mean, is that really? I mean, I, again, I'm not saying people shouldn't complain. Obviously, they should. But overall, it's a net benefit, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm, I'm happy to change my mind. I don't know. I was just watching some interesting coverage this past week talking about how there's been protests against the French forces because they received yes. outsized resources and support and protection in comparison to local troops. And Wait, uh, say that again. For what reason? They receive more resources, more protection, um, just in general, better than, than the local groups. And the local groups face way higher casualties than the French forces do. 
I've also heard arguments about how France is responsible for this mess to begin with, which I can't remember off the top of my head. But France is motivated to make it stop because these are former, you know, French colonies, colonies. and they, these countries already have the French language. And so if they are going to immigrate, they are going to immigrate to France or other European French speaking countries. And France can't deal with this huge, very targeted influx. Yes. It, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So France is responsible. France before is responsible for a lot of human rights violations, right? France today and France before are two separate entities, you know, and I, I don't see them the same thing, okay? This whole issue of them getting more protection, I mean, they're there with, I don't know how to say this without sounding like a dick. Maybe I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> like, they're there with their expense to do something that it would be within your interest. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know how to phrase this like it too, so that I don't sound like a dick. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to say, like, what do you expect? I was going to say, like, what do you expect? Like, if the condition for them to be there to provide stability would, would be so that they could use their own money to provide themselves more protection. I would still be like, yeah, maybe you should still be here. And again, if you also feel like, well, they should be here, they should spend taxpayer money to provide the stability because of what they did before. That is also like a collectivist mindset and also a, a version of the sunk cost fallacy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, is it like, no, maybe it's not necessarily the sunk fallacy, but I mean, again, it's not the same entity, right? Like it's not the same government. It's not the same people um but yeah yeah i see what you mean i think yeah the well there's so many other aspects to the sahel problem as well like it's also partially a, a climate change problem it's a deeply economically motivated problem so just yeah. military intervention isn't going to be enough to end no climate. but this is yeah but this is not about like but you do need like okay you do need some other forces you need help okay you have instability you need help, okay? You could be like, oh, these are just colonialists just here for coming again to, to do, like some people are saying they're just trying to control this area. You could be like, well, they should help because they did this before. You could be like, oh my God, look at the unfairness. Maybe they should go away because they're providing themselves more protection than other soldiers. But at the end of the day, instead of like looking at all of this through principles, because this is, this, this is what you get when you look at things through principles. Well, they should this because they're out of principle. Well, they should like, they, they should like provide us more, it's the same level of protection because this is a principle. Again, if you, if from a utilitarian perspective, if you're a consequentialist, you would be like, if they're here, if they would be here with these conditions, and these are the conditions that they would be here, and if them leaving would mean more instability, okay, then, and even if there are, there are some costs and mistreatment associated with them being here, at the end of the day, a simple cost-benefit analysis would lead you to the conclusion that it would be preferable for them to be here, okay? Like, again, put your mindset, put your frame of thinking in a consequentialist utilitarian mindset rather than somebody that thinks based on principles, because that is the way that you're going to come up with conclusions that would benefit the people around that area the most. That's what I'm saying. Again, I might, I understand my, your premises, argument. my premises might be incorrect and I would be happy to change my conclusion based on better premises. However, the frame of the, the frame that will get you to the best conclusions is a consequentialist ones rather than somebody that is, comes to, mm, mm, prescriptions based on principles or virtues and stuff like that. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below, because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our blasphemous art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find 
anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our Blasphemy that we continue to send you more Blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.